Is the must-have cardigan truly a must-have? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to the String Things channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Mel and this is where I share my knitting journey. So today, guys, I have a finished object to share. Ooh. Um, I don't know why I feel like I need to do that. But anyways, I have my must-have cardigan, which I mentioned in my previous video. I'll just I'll give you the quick look. Um, so that you can see that yes I really did finish it um, it is still damp so I'm not gonna put it on right now but I'll be sure to uh, include some extra pictures or footage of it in this video so this was uh, a free pattern from your inspirations the name is must have cardigan and it's something that I had saved a couple of years ago when I started doing my whole big search of the internet and picking out patterns. This is something I actually had put aside um, as one of my dream makes. And at the time, I didn't actually read the pattern. I just looked at the picture and saw that it ticked off a lot of boxes. Um, so those being v-neck, cable, cardigan, like all over cables. Uh, semi-fitted, set-in shoulders, and worsted weight yarn. So yeah, that's a decent must-have list for uh, what I wanted in a cardigan. But, you know, when I'm going to invest a lot of time in something, I want to make sure it's going to be something that I like and I'm going to wear. So let's fast forward to June of earlier this year. Bust out the pattern, feeling good with my knitting skills ready to tackle this and to my dismay I noticed that the pattern is not size inclusive. So the finished bust uh, size range is 34 inches to 41 inches. So very narrow range. So I fit within that range but I felt kind of torn because I do support size inclusivity and didn't know whether to still make this pattern if I knew I was going to be eventually speaking about it as well. And obviously I decided to move ahead with it and my reasons might be different than your reasons whether you do it or not but I wanted to bring up these uh, thoughts and questions that I had and questions that I need to start asking myself as well. So with this pattern. Um, I had my heart set on it quite some time ago and I didn't want to go back and search for an alternative or a substitute. And not only did this cardigan pattern tick a lot of boxes off for me, it also made me think about other considerations that I take and maybe others take when choosing a pattern. So yes, size inclusivity is an important consideration, but also accessibility to the materials itself should be another consideration and was one of mine. So with the recommended yarn weight being worsted, that is something that can be found at many different price points and can fit many people's budgets. So the yarn I chose, for example, cost me I think $30. $30 to make a cardigan. Yeah that's kind of unheard of in some cases and that's 100% wool yarn okay I'll show you the yarn in a bit but my point is you don't have to have a huge budget to make this cardigan um, as shown in the pattern. Um, whereas there's other patterns out there that Maybe you really like them, but then you realize that it looks that good because it's held with a strand of mohair. And mohair is pricey and does not fit everyone's budget. And if you knit something without the mohair, then it's going to change the look of that garment compared to what you're seeing in the pattern photos. So 
Uh, price point, um, accessibility to yarn, definitely a consideration that people should take. I'm still, I'm not trying to make up excuses for the pattern being not size inclusive, but I'm trying to bring up other issues that other people may um, think of as well. And with me choosing this pattern, I, with me being a stay at home mom, I obviously went with the budget reason for continuing with this pattern. So it is a free pattern. And I just said I spent $30 on this yarn. So again, I make no income. I have no financial contribution to the family as a stay at home mom. So I've got to be responsible in, you know, some of my choices. I know I just bought some Noro yarn if you watched my last video, but I can live a little sometimes too. So those are some reasons for the maker, the knitter, on choosing a pattern that's not size inclusive. But what about designers? Do they all go in the doghouse if they don't make size inclusive patterns? Does it matter if the pattern is free or paid? So more thoughts that came to my mind is I don't think we should get angry or condemn uh, some designers who come out with patterns that are not size inclusive because maybe they're new and they don't know it's a thing or maybe they don't have access to a tech editor to help them grade uh, further sizes and because they might not have the budget to hire someone or maybe they don't have any access to testers for the larger sizes and don't feel confident in releasing the pattern with those sizes if they haven't seen their design on real bodies. Or should the designer still release the pattern with those sizes and just have a disclaimer saying these sizes have not been tested? I don't know. More questions. More questions keep coming up. <laughs> so I leave it with you guys. Let me know in the comments if you have your own questions or considerations on how you choose your patterns. Do you specifically seek out size inclusive patterns? Or do you fit in, you know, the normal size range so it doesn't really apply to you? Do you just kind of turn your eye away from that fact? Let me know. Let's uh let's start chatting about it. Okay, so Let's get back into the actual pattern itself. And the yarn. Yes, I will show you the yarn. I should have pulled it out one moment. Okay, I'm sorry if it looks like the camera angle changed. My battery died when I was grabbing the yarn. Okay, so I showed this yarn in my last video. It is Briggs and Little... Uh, Regal. The color is light brown and it's got some dark, some light. So the yarn itself, this was my first time using this yarn and I would describe it as rustic and toothy. Um, toothy is good for doing cables because I do the cabling without a cable needle so you don't have to worry with this yarn when you're you know taking stitches off your needle the loops just kind of stay as is because the yarn is um, grabbing onto itself so really good for cabling the only downside for me because I'm when I'm doing cables I hold my yarn quite tight like I've got extra tension than what I normally would. I don't know what it is about cables that make me do that. And this yarn doesn't have a lot of give, so I did find working with it a bit rough, but maybe you won't have the same experience, but just a note. With this yarn being more rustic, it's definitely not um, next to skin soft like other yarns, it does have some prickliness to it, but I am hoping that with some more wash and wear, it does soften. And with just one uh, wash and block of my swatch, it did get slightly softer, so that gives me hope that my cardigan will get a lot softer over time. 
So I originally bought uh, eight hanks of this yarn. I didn't actually need to buy that much yardage, but I just felt like buying eight for some reason. I cannot remember my thought process behind that. I ended up using four and a bit um, of these hanks. And the, the bit, I, I needed like three more rows left on the last panel I was working on, which was a front panel. And then the button band um, was worked up in that, uh, the fifth, the a bit hank. Um, but there's a lot of yardage in these. These are 248 meters and 113 grams. It's a quarter pound of yarn. <laughs> and I bought this yarn from a shop in Newfoundland called Wool Trends. I'll leave the information for you guys again uh, down below. Okay, so the pattern itself. Um, I believe it's labeled as an intermediate which is which is right it's definitely not a beginner friendly pattern and while the mechanics and working out the stitches themselves are not difficult it's you know being organized and keeping track of the stitch patterns and cabling that you're doing so in the instructions there is uh, chart instructions and written instructions for the stitch patterns they're just of one repeat so there's no chart instructions that follow along say like the decreases on you know a sleeve or a panel it's just one stitch repeat it's given in a chart and unfortunately in terms of keeping track of what you're doing with the stitch patterns they're not all multiples of the same number so the this kind of like wrap column um it, it has a row repeat of four four row repeat that i don't know why that was hard to say the cable is an eight row repeat but this diamond stitch pattern is a 26 row repeat so they don't line up but I found all the stitch patterns to be quite intuitive. So as long as I knew which row number I was on, then I knew what I was doing. And you really just have to keep track of these two smaller ones when you're going to do like a cross or the wrap. Because the diamond pattern, you're actually doing something on every right side row. You're always, you know, the stitches are traveling every time on the right side so you really just have to keep track of if you've gone far out enough and then if you've gone far in enough to do the single cross that there is so yeah i found them quite intuitive and i guess does this count as a stitch pattern the moss stitch anyways there's moss stitch on the sides too So on Ravelry, when I was looking at uh, past projects, there were a number of people who mentioned uh, modifications and I decided to do a lot of the same modifications on my cardigan. Oh, speaking of Ravelry, so yes, I noted that the size inclusivity issue of this pattern. I did find a link to an old cow on Ravelry and um, there's a couple knitters in there who made two additional sizes, a 44 inch bust and a 49 inch bust. So I'll include information to that below. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, done by the knitters, not done by your inspirations. It would be nice to see a company like your inspirations go back and add more sizes to the patterns, especially the more popular ones. But I don't know, I do think they'd have the resources and people power to do that. But I don't know. Um, so modifications that I did. There was many people talking about changing the number of stitches you cast on. So this project is cast on from the bottom and worked up. So you start with the uh, ribbing on the body. And a lot of people cast on a greater number of stitches than instructed in the pattern. Um, because there, when you're almost done the ribbing, you have to increase a bunch 
for when you start the cabling uh, sections because you need more stitches for the cabling because if you didn't know cabling really cinches up the fabric and I thought that was a pretty good idea I was worried about the whole balance though because obviously you're increasing stitches to accommodate for that cinching in that the cabling does but I ended up casting on uh, the number of stitches that the cabling section has minus one or two depending if the number was odd or even number because of the two by two ribbing so that's one modification I did and it worked out I have nice like straight ribbing I really didn't want my ribbing to cinch in the bottom I don't like that look I just wanted like straight down the sides and um yeah nice like flat ribbing those so that was good the shoulders in the pattern it tells you to whatever work a number amount of stitches bind off you know bind off again kind of thing but I really like doing a three needle bind off so I worked out how to do a short rows for the back panel and then left all the stitches live and then for the front panels again worked out short rows and left those stitches live so I think I ended up raising the back maybe one or two rows more than the pattern does but it's really just like an insignificant amount in the grand scheme of things but I was really proud of myself of figuring out the short rows and I did shadow short rows which was my first time doing that technique and I like those a lot more than German short rows which is what I was normally doing so um, my tension is way more consistent that way so I'm definitely going to use that kind of short row method moving on um, other people mirrored the diamonds So when you look at the crosses, I chose to cross them so that they went out from each other. And I also did that in the front so that it would kind of follow the, the V-neck. And yeah, it's kind of strange that that's not a thing in the pattern because don't you think that would look funny if they're going the same way? I don't know. I have this thing about like symmetry. So definitely appreciated the notes discussing um mirroring the diamond patterns i didn't bother mirroring the nine stitch cable because i thought it looked similar enough that no one's gonna really notice from far away when looking at it and then the last modification i did was the number of stitches to pick up for the button band because i did not hit gauge for this pattern so I couldn't really trust the pickup um, stitch numbers that the pattern gives. So I had to, I did my own measurements and figured out my pickup ratio. And I'm really glad I did that. And then I think my button band turned out really good. So yeah, that was my last modification, uh, picking up stitches. So I followed the instructions for size extra small, but I have a size medium because I didn't hit gauge, but I was able to follow those instructions and then wash and block to a size medium. So that worked out because I was trying to decide how much ease I wanted and I didn't think two inches of ease was going to be enough, but then I wasn't so keen about having too much ease, but it all worked out. It fits me really well. And I'm really glad that I ended up with size medium and not a size extra small as the pattern says I should based on my bust. So that's another thing. Just because the pattern says the recommended size is X, you don't have to knit that one. <laughs> I think I've also learned that your inspiration patterns somehow fit small on me. I don't know. I, I'm just thinking back to my color work sweater in my first video where the sleeves are too short and it's just like really snug. That one I also picked the recommended size and that one did not work out for me. So just be careful, just be aware of that. So my tips if you do want to knit this pattern up, because of the 
row repeats not matching up in multiples, definitely keep track of which row number you're on. And for the stitches themselves, use some markers to mark where each little pattern is so you don't accidentally, you know, run into another pattern when you should be doing the previous pattern and so on. So another tip kind of goes along with the difficulty level of this pattern. Um, so knitting it up is not difficult, but there is a little bit of mental gymnastics. I don't even know if it's that difficult, but when you get to different parts where you're, say, increasing or decreasing your pieces, you're going to come to these points where you're running into say the cable and you got to decide whether you're going to still cross those stitches because maybe you don't have as many stitches anymore to do the cross. Let me see if I have an example where I had to do that. I think that's on the sleeves. When you're doing the sleeves. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see. I don't know if you can really tell, but this cable should actually have another crossing point here. But because I was so close to the edge of that piece, I just decided to skip it because it was going to get all wonky. So just some considerations like that. And then... Oh, for the sleeves? Also, again, for the sleeves, because you're working bottom up, so you do have to increase. And where you're increasing is where the moss stitch pattern is. So I made sure to make an increase that would continue the moss stitch pattern. So depending where I was, that meant either a knit front back or a knit back front. And that way, the, my moss stitch pattern would continue and I didn't have to like rework anything. And yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> so, do I recommend this pattern? Yes. I do. Um, despite it not being size inclusive, I still think it's a great pattern and great design. The instructions themselves are solid and the stitch patterns are relatively intuitive once you get into them. And an important consideration is that the recommended yarn is budget friendly. So you can keep it under $50 or you can get a little more luxurious and get something above that. Um, Worcester weight is really a nice weight for everyone to use. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little review on the must-have cardigan and also my brief discussion on size inclusivity. Uh, let me know if you're going to be questioning your knitting ethics and morals now. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit like and do consider subscribing if you want to continue seeing videos from me. Until then, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.